Hello Cancer, what's up? Welcome back to the Illus Illuminator. We will be doing your yearly spread based on the 12 houses. If you have been with me over a year, then you know that this was also the reading that I did last year, which got a lot of good comments and a lot of requests for this year as well. So I'm going to go step by step, starting off with the first house, which is the house of Aries, but it is all about the self, your physical body, uh, the way that you are being perceived, just everything that has to do with your inner world, as well as how people are going to be perceiving you. We are starting off with the eight of swords. Oh, okay. Hmm. I feel like it is going to be a a year filled with a lot of self-reflection though like you're really going to be looking in the mirror you, you know we always say like it always starts with the man in the mirror but seeing the confused element of the eight of swords coming in the first house it may be that sometimes you're just a little bit lost when it comes to how to present yourself and that this year is going to be a year where you're going to go in self-discovery here and perhaps if there was some type of how to say that like if there were some mistakes that you did in the last year you're really going to be looking at yourself like okay how can i fix this how can i fix this within myself like i said it starts with the man in the mirror here uh, we also have the knight of cups with the four of pentacles so it looks like you're not going to be like if you are single you're going to be open for dates but you're not going to be quite open in your heart space all right so the four of pentacles is a little bit closed off it's a little bit of watching before acting so you're going to be quite introspective and be careful with that eight of swords that you're not going to be feeling constantly as if you are in the wrong so to speak you know i sense a little bit of a lack of confidence and that's why you may be starting to close your heart off to any type of potential love that could come in so this is definitely a sign for you to do a lot of introspection for the upcoming year but not in a sense where you're going to be closing yourself off for any type of love or romance, all right? So uh, be mindful of that. Sometimes it's all up in our headspace, right? Like we may think like we're not good enough or we're not um, ready for love. So these are definitely aspects that you may need to work on in the year of 2023, dear Cancer. But there is definitely a lot of healing that you may need to go through in, in the year of 2023 in regards to how, like how you see yourself, how you perceive yourself, your self-esteem, like that is something that you may need to put a lot of focus on. So let's see. On to the second house, we've got the material world, we've got your assets and your worthiness, we've got all about your security, money, finances, or any type of luxury, which is obviously connected to Venus, Taurus energy here in the second house. What is about to change? What can you expect? Oh, I like that. The 10 of pentacles, look at this. So I see that you're going to be committing yourself. There might be some type of a family share that you're going to be on or you're going to purchase a house there's definitely a lot of financial gains that you're going to be accomplishing in the year of 2023 so when it comes to your assets i feel like you're going to feel very rich and you're going to feel quite grounded stable uh, financially i feel like you're going to be all around also like family could be your family could also be getting a lot of money or succeeding in a sense and this will also definitely influence your life as well so family related stuff um perhaps you're going to be you know getting a house from 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 your parents or something quite big that is coming from the parents or coming from the family foundation which is going to be a long lasting longevity for you and then we have the four of swords so you're going to be focusing a lot on resting as well on uh, finding some type of healing as well like it's not all going to be about money and finances and you know materialistic things no you're going to be also doing a lot of things to get like an ease like a peace of mind all right so that is also a good thing 
let's see what is the third house for you the house of gemini which is all about your thoughts your communication social media being online anything that has to do with Ooh, I like that. The King of Swords. That is the master of Gemini energy, the master of thoughts. You're going to be quite direct, all right? Um, definitely not a bullshitter. I see you with the King of Swords being very intellectual with people in the way that you're going to be communicating. I feel like you're going to give out a lot of orders. So whatever you're doing at work, it's going to be non-emotional, giving a lot of orders, being some type of CEO or something in that realm. Um, also a lot of analytics. So some of you may be going into analytics, maybe analyzing a lot of things, maybe analyzing social media aspects or how to grow your business or grow any type of business that you are working in but overall also um, the way that people are going to be perceiving you is someone that they can't mess around with someone that is quite direct honest truthful and definitely not emotionally dependent okay so i like the king of swords there coming through very yeah okay Anyway, the fourth house, we've got family. That is your own house, Cancer. Family, background, we have um, self-care, your foundation, and we have the star coming into that house. So I feel like for some of you, you may be doing some house renovation. For others of you, this is definitely a journey of healing that you're going to be doing within the house. Some of you may be also starting a business from, how, from, from home where you're going to be helping people, doing a lot of healing. Um, if that is not the case, then it feels like you're going to be healing some roots and family foundations as well. But overall, with a star in the fourth house in your own house, it also means that you're going to be... Um, how do I say that? Like... You're going to excel at something like there is some type of rapid development here. There is some type of stardom within your own house. I don't know how to explain it. Where does it, where is this coming from? Let's let's pull another let's pull another card. Hmm. Okay, so clarifying that, we have the Four of Cups. So that just means that if you have felt a little bit stuck or bored within the home life, I feel like there is a lot of healing that is about to take place. I do sense that you're going to have a year filled with a lot of healing. Um, you may have felt like you were not happy wherever you are or wherever you live. And there is a... Um, there is a need or a yearning to go outside or to purchase a new home or to live somewhere else. So you're going to be kind of like trying to get yourself out of that stuck energy within the home life and do something that really is close to your heart space. All right. That's so, such a bad. Why do, why do we have the four of cups there? I was really hoping on something else there for you. But you could get bored sometimes within the home life and this is definitely a sign for you to start doing something outside of the house or try to renovate your house in order to make it filled with a lot more light energy maybe some of you may have felt a little bit depressed over the year or just not happy with the way that your house is looking or something in that realm and you're needing to work on that because with the star it means that you can definitely make it a space of healing and love and and yeah hmm all right let's um i'm going to clarify deeper in the extender so i don't want to spoil everything for you guys but let's see what is going on in the fifth house which is the house of leo which is all about passion excitement entertainment uh, being a little bit out in you know being being the star <laughs> kind of like and we've got the ace of wands here so that is definitely saying that you're going to be very passionate 
I feel like you're going to draw a lot of attention outside. So wherever you are, there's going to be a lot of attention drawing energy. You're also going to get a lot of opportunities that may have to do with entertainment. All right. So maybe uh, I'm hearing uh, the theater, not for everyone, but that's what I'm hearing. But it could also be any type of events that you're going to be doing. And there's going to be a lot of new events that are going to be representing to you. And you're going to be definitely very motivated and also challenged to take these opportunities. So I do feel like you're going to stand out here in the crowd with the fifth house and the ace of wands. It looks like you're definitely... Um, some like that's maybe why the star is there like you are a star you're going to be standing out especially when there are a lot of people um, around you people are going to be noticing you and i feel like you're going to find a lot of energy and excitement of people noticing you as well so i like the ace of wands coming out in the fifth house for you so when it comes to your creativity, I feel like you're going to be very creative. You're going to be opening up your talents and you're going to show yourself off, right? Like you're not going to be getting stuck in your own element. You're, it's, it's a time where you're going to be showing your skills, showing your what you're good at. Definitely a lot of motivation and a lot of creativity coming your way here. Then we have the sixth house, which is the house of Virgo. And it's all about work. It's all about the daily routines. It's all about your health, your well-being, all right, the service that you give to others. And we have the Queen of Cups, beautiful energy coming through. That is your own element. And it is all about being emotional, being sensitive, being empathic, understanding, helping people with emotional intelligence is what i'm getting here because you got the king of swords and the queen of cups so there is some type of emotional intelligence that you're going to be giving to other people that are that is also going to help you on an emotional sense um, i think there was another sign that had the king of cups in the sixth house i'm not sure which one that was but yeah I do also feel like you may be getting in touch with a Virgo in particular, and there could be a lot of love between the both of you. If you are feminine, this is a feminine Virgo, so there, there's definitely some type of a deep connection with a Virgo or with a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that is going to be taking place in the month of September for you. There is definitely a deepening of the heart. Um, I'm also seeing that you're going to be definitely focused on a lot of healing. So it keeps on coming back that you're going to do something with healing. But in this case, you're going to give service with your healing. And we saw that with the fourth house. I kept on getting the feeling as if you're going to help and heal people from the house or whatever that is. It could be Reiki, it could be, I don't know, um, any type of healing work that you could do, right? Like even become like a tarot reader or... Um, you know, crystal healer, whatever the, the case is, it isn't going to be something where you're going to help other people through an emotional empathic connection that you're going to be having. In your own internal world, I do feel like you're going to do a lot to um, regulate your own emotions and you're going to be definitely in touch with your heart and with your emotions and with your intuition. So when it comes to your health, I see that you're going to be having like a very emotional and healthy um 2023 all right which is very very important so i like that so let's move over to the seventh house which is all about relationships marriages contracts partnerships justice all right or even marriage and we have the seven of cups with the three of pentacles now i'm just laughing because it may mean that you have you're going to be having a lot of different prospects, a lot of different um, people that want to be in a commitment with you, and you're going to be quite hesitant on who to give this commitment to. So with the Seven of Cups, you're going to have a lot of different choices and options for, with people to get into a relationship with, and you're going to be taking your sweet little time here with that Three of Pentacles. You're going to see what 
other people can bring to the table for you. You're not going to jump into any type of relationship. You're just going to keep your options open and you're not going to be fond on um, getting married or getting engaged as quickly as possible. You're just taking your sweet little time here. So I think that you're doing the best thing. You're waiting for the right, uh, how do I say that, for the right proposal kind of. Or maybe if it is just one person, you're waiting for the right proposal before you um, seal the deal when it comes to the relationship. So I, I do sense a little bit of hard to get type of energy. So I don't know if I am just picking that up, but I do feel like you're going to be quite hard to get into a relationship. You're not the, uh, you know, the, uh, the typical, um, how do I say that? Like the typical, oh, how did it just flew by? I don't know. Maybe I, sh I wasn't supposed to say it. Mm. Like the typical needy Cancerian. You're not that Cancerian. Okay, you're not. You're, you're going to be the one that is going to be very hard to get. That's really what I'm getting through. Like if the, if the offer is not good enough or it's not worthy for you, you're just going to be rejecting it. Maybe that's why the rejection card is there. Fourth house. You know, maybe you're going to be reflecting this rejection onto other people and it is a rejection from yourself actually and you just want the best for yourself and maybe you felt like you didn't get the best for yourself in the past years so there is some type of reflection or some type of mirroring going on. So I keep on getting something about the mirror, right? That is weird because I said the man in the mirror in the first house and now Dealing with the seventh house and the fourth house, I'm getting again some type of mirroring energy. That is quite weird. Okay, let's see. We have the eighth house, which is a Scorpio energy, and it's all about intimacy. It's all about, well, it's the, it's the underworld, but also sex. It's um, all about your Kundalini energy obsessions anything that is hidden in the dark place and we need to kind of like dive into the dark shadow aspect in order to get some type of truth out and we have the queen of swords together with the knight of swords wow so we have now the king and the queen of swords coming through air energy but this is again a lot of the signs keep on getting like um a partnership I do see a strong partnership and with that Queen of Swords coming into the eighth house I feel like you're going to be I mean Scorpio energy eighth house is also all about research is diving into that nitty-gritty and trying to get some type of truth out things that we don't like to know or we don't really um, not many people are interested in that, right? But with you coming in the Queen of Swords in the 8th house, it means that you're going to be very much focused on getting some type of truth out. And that's what I'm feeling here. Um, I feel like you're going to be quite cold here because usually the 8th house is all about very, very intense energy. So having an air energy, two air energies, it's like you're not going to allow... the intensity of situations get to you. You're going to keep like a calm energy in your headspace. I feel like that's what you're going to be doing. Um, I do also get the sense that someone may be trying to get more information about your past or about your secrets, you know, things that you are hiding and you're not going to be tolerating this. You know, it's like, no, this is my privacy. Like you're going to be very strong on your privacy and you're not going to allow people to dig into your past or dig into any type of um, secrets that you had i feel like you're going to be very private in the year of 2023 and it's because you've been through the mess you've been through bullshit like the queen of swords is the one that has been through a lot of drama and bullshit and they draw the line and they can be quite direct and yeah I mean, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. 
and triggering. That's what I can say. Like you, there is a very and triggering energy here with that queen of swords in the eighth house. Sorry, I'm just trying to get like more into the into the energy. Like I'm I'm getting a little bit lost in the uh, in the energy field here and maybe I'm just trying to channel a little bit for you guys. But yeah, your heart is locked up. That's also what I'm seeing here. Your heart is locked up. I mean, you're not going to allow people to hurt you with past energies. And that's why maybe there is a connection with that first house where you were in that eight of swords energy, right? Because a lot of people are trying to blame you for things. And the eighth house is also all about transformation, right? It's a death card, it's transformative. And I feel like you're going to be showing them that you have changed. You're not the same person anymore. So yeah, in the month of November next year, there is some huge transformation that is about to be held uh, or is going on with you. The ninth house, which is the house of Sagittarius, and it's all about seeking the truth, higher learning, foreign languages, foreign countries, travel, risk taking, adventure, everything that belongs to the Sagittarian energy. And we have the Wheel of Fortune, another changing element. And also the fact that the Wheel of Fortune is connected to Sagittarius energy, is Jupiter energy. Uh, it looks like your, your, your faith is about to change, your luck is about to change. If you haven't been able to travel as much as you want it, um, there is definitely a huge breakthrough here where you're going to be doing a lot of things for yourself, where you're going to be traveling a lot, where you're going to be gaining a lot of new insights as well as with the Empress here, it also feels like you're going to be taking a lot more care for yourself. Like you're not going to be doing a lot of, you know, group, how do I say that, like group travels. I do see you doing a lot of uh, solo travels, all right, or with small amount of people. For some of you, maybe traveling with your mother. But there is definitely a lot of traveling that is going on that is going to be gaining you a lot of love, a lot of self like um how do i say that i'm sorry guys you guys are the first one i need to kind of like reopen the vocabulary of english in my head space <laughs> i'm so sorry for that it's not going that flowy in my head space anyway we're on the right track i believe maybe i shouldn't just ask too much of myself <laughs> maybe that's a sign for you as well don't ask too much of yourself just take it easy but uh yeah with the emperors i feel like you are going to be gaining a lot of no i just lost it i seriously lost it like no i can just pull one more card for that Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you will be doing a lot of trips, a lot of traveling just for your own sanctuary, right? Like for yourself and for, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, like Six of Cups, maybe traveling to a place where you used to live or a country where you used to live. Uh, maybe traveling with siblings could also be the case with the family the mother and siblings could also be but that's that's about it how about the 10th house for you which is all about your reputation your career your finances work related energies and we have the temperance card together with the seven of wands. So this is you really protecting your, your yourself in the career front, all right? So maybe there could be some people that are trying to take your position and you're going to be protecting your position. I feel like you're going to be quite happy and also content with 
the way that your work is going so i love the temperance card coming through it, it shows that you're going to be quite balanced here you're going to be definitely doing everything that you can to keep things going the way that they are so you don't want to go through a change um, you don't want to give up on your position there is a lot of a lot of you that are going to be fighting to keep your position um, but when it comes to fighting for a next chapter i feel like you're okay with wh whatever you're going to be doing like you're going to love your job you're going to be quiet um, you know you've patiently waited for this position so you're going to stay in that position um, as long as you can because it is bringing you a lot of fortune it is bringing you a lot of peace of mind so whatever it is that you're doing when it comes to your, to your responsibilities I feel like you have everything in control so there is no point in trying to change up the scenario for your career because everything is going to be going smooth waters so I like that and by the way, you do have the Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck as well, which is definitely the Queen of the Capricorn energy. So you you have you, you're okay financially. You're you're more than okay financially. So that's why you're going to be fighting to keep your position the way it is. Then we have the eleventh house, which is Aquarius energy. It's all about your friendships. It's all about your social environment, the group of people that you're going to be dealing with, um, any type of goals, humanitarian goals, being rebellious, being innovative. Technology is also definitely a part of that. And then we have the Knight of Wands with the Nine of Swords. Hmm interesting interesting give me one more on that please and eight of cups so for some of you you may feel like there are a lot of people in your life that are just in and out of your life like friends that just you know reach out whenever they need you or whenever they are in trouble whenever they have stress or anxiety and i feel like a lot of these people's inconsistency is bringing a lot of stress um, in your own internal world and i feel like you're going to be walking away from some of the people some of the groups some of your friends that have not been um, either helping you going through a very harsh time you know when they say right like uh, you know you know your friends when you are doing good or when you're doing bad so I feel like you're going to get to know a lot of them um, and understand that some of them are just very inconsistent or they only want to go party they don't want to really have like a um, night when we can just talk about our stuff or go through emotional conversations and i feel like you're going to be walking away from these type of people that are only like out for partying or they only want some type of attention or they only come and go whenever they uh, they please to so you so that's why i feel like the the sword energy the king and the queen of swords is coming through very strongly like you're going to make non-emotional decisions right like you're going to be quite upfront and honest and maybe even blunt in your in the way that you're going to be communicating with a lot of people and perhaps not everyone is going to be able to handle that right so let's see what about the 12th house which is all about the subconscious mind it's about your healing it's all about the spiritual world the unseen world and also about your karma your past your baggage so kind of like the um, the end of not, not the end <laughs> it's like the last house of the whole zodiac wheel so it's all about like all the houses together they come and they come with some type of conclusion to you let's see Ooh, three cards wanted to pop up three of cups six of swords and the nine of cups Hmm. So it looks like you're going to be searching for like-minded people and you're going to find them. Three of Cups is a celebration card. It's coming together with new group of people that are spiritually in tune, just like you. So maybe you're, you're, you're saying goodbye to people that are just too inconsistent, like we said, or they don't have the same goals like you. 
and you're going to be navigating towards people that have the same spiritual beliefs, same spiritual understanding like you. And even though it's going to be painful to walk away from some of the people in your past or your friends or kind of like so-called friends, uh, you're going to be finding new groups of people. And I feel like these people are going to be definitely making you feel very happy, very content. You're going to be able to... To speak your mind with a peace of mind and that's what you truly needed um, in a spiritual sense again seeing the nine of cups it feels like you're going to be definitely happy with your spiritual progress as well uh, for some of you there might be also some type of spiritual journey that is waiting for you that you're going to be doing with a group of people or with three people maybe your sibling and your mother like we saw in the ninth house of sagittarius and this this spiritual journey is going to bring you a lot of happiness and joy and fulfillment as well so this could be in the month of March as well when this is going to be happening all right let's see what the overall energy is for you ten of cups with the eight of pentacles so working on your overall happiness working on your family foundation all right and leaving a, a, a period of depression or a period of lack of behind here with the five of pentacles and i do see that you're going to be succeeding um you're just going to be overall very happy and also when it comes to work you're going to be very content but also with your family and with your relationships in general i want to know actually what the mermaids are going to say just to wrap this reading up for you let's see Hmm, the unseen, too much is hidden from you. Then we have time out, awareness, contemplation, solitude, and time alone. We've got Song of the Siren, the call, summoning the voice into knowledge, and reclaiming your authenticity. So, it looks like Looking at these four cards that want to come up, um, the unseen that is, that there is a lot hidden from you, that is something that you are going to be f kind of like, how do I say that? Mm, sorry guys, my head is just like full. I guess it's full. <laughs> It's like you know that there are a lot of things going on outside of you. And I, f I see that in the first house with the Eight of Swords. So you have a lot of doubts. You have a lot of things that, has, that have happened that brought down a little bit of your self-esteem. There was definitely something that kind of like hurt you. Perhaps something in the year of 2022 that came to the light or that still has not came to the light which has caused you to have a lot of doubts in your headspace and i feel like um, the time out card is definitely also connected to that first house where you're going to be a little bit colder detached and trying to figure things out without truly knowing the fully truth and the way that you're going to be doing that for the justice for yourself is by being open and honest and diplomatic and blunt as possible and that is going to be a whole journey for you like you cannot always expect other people to be upfront and honest and they're <clears throat> sorry, um, and honest with you. But what you can do is being, being that yourself, being like the example. And I feel like a lot of things, a lot of events in your life has led you to become that example that you want from other people and understanding or coming to the acceptance that you can't always expect that from other people. And while you're going to go through this, while you're going to go through that uh, contemplation and awareness um, time, you're going to be reclaiming lost part of, the, of yourself. You're going to be reclaiming your own authenticity. And I feel like once you have reclaimed that, you know exactly what it is that you stand for, what you are. You're not allowing other people to tell you like, okay, you're this or that or make you feel guilty or go trip on you that's when you're going to be very direct and honest and you're going to be communicating from a, from a healed place and also from your own authentic self. And that is going to be a whole journey. I mean, I feel like you're going to have a lot to 
Like it's going to be a year with a lot of good lessons and you're going to be the winner at, at the end with that call and the summoning coming through. Like your voice is going to be making a lot of changes in your life um, or also in other people's life. All right. So, yeah, I feel like uh, I hope that I am I was able to tell you all about it. If you want to join me on the extended, there will be a link in the description box below this video. It's going to be an extra long reading, as you guys can already imagine. But we're going to clarify all of these energies and see what else is coming through for you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for enduring, even when I got a little bit lost in my headspace. So sorry for that. Uh, but I, I went through my back while I was... Um, you know, exercising and I've been having a lot of pain. So I'm already happy that I can do this, but sometimes the energy just goes up and on. So thank you for being here. Make sure to drop a like and comment if you haven't already and subscribe if you haven't already and catch you soon. Have a blessed, beautiful, healthy, loving and um, prosperous year in the 2023. Ciao.